Hey everybody, thanks for joining me and looking at this video. My goal here is to help decrease bandage associated problems in small animal practice. I have seen many patients present to our surgical practice with complications related to poorly made bandages or bandages that simply are not fulfilling their intended function. So let's look at some bandaging principles from which you should never stray. So you might remember that a bandage is made of a primary, secondary and tertiary layers and that's really nice but if you can't remember which one the cast padding is versus the cling, is it primary or secondary, it doesn't really help you to create a good bandage. So we are just going to call the different bandage layers by their function. We're going to name them by what they're according to do and that should help you remember their order. The one thing you need to remember is you can never vary their order. You can maybe omit the contact layer. You can add a lot of padding and make your padding layer really thick but you cannot change the order of which you apply the materials. Let's have a closer look at this. The first layer of the bandage is the contact layer and that is the layer that goes directly on the wound or incision. Now if you're bandaging for an orthopedic reason and you have no wound or incision then you don't have a contact layer. You just omit this layer. The contact layer will be whatever you need it to be depending on the stage in which your wound healing progress is occurring. It should usually be non-adherent. It often will be therapeutic such as honey or maybe silver sulfadiazine or whatever your product of choice that you might like to apply onto wounds and you might just put that on a piece of gauze. Uh, you might just use a Telfa pad or one of those petroleum jelly infiltrated gauze pads. All of these are contact layers. Contact layers, just this layer on itself is a whole seminar topic on its own and it belongs in the wound management lecture series, not just bandaging, all right? But the contact layer you apply when you have a wound or incision. The next layer you're going to use is your padding layer and the padding can be um, the cast padding such as the picture here so convenient and easy to apply. You can also use that big cotton padding uh, that you can buy. You've probably seen it used for Robert Jones bandaging. That's a little more cumbersome to manage but will still do a good job. The type of bandaging you want to apply will dictate the amount of padding you need. So uh, the more immobilization you want to create, the more padding you need. If your patient uh, still has a lot of swelling in the leg and you really want to decrease the swelling, you may want to apply a bit more padding so you can compress more with the next layer. All right, so depending on what you want to do will dictate how much padding you're going to want to apply onto your bandage. Your next layer is your cling bandage material. It's going to serve to compress the cast padding that you've just applied and it is going to give shape to the bandage. The important thing is to have a sufficient amount of tension when you apply this cling layer. Not enough tension is going to create a sloppy bandage that's going to tend to fall down the leg and not fulfill the function that you need your bandage to fulfill. Too much tension might make the bandage uncomfortable to the patient and it can decrease the blood flow to the area so you do have to have good monitoring. You have to be patient with yourself. It takes a bit of practice to get the tension right. Mostly we tend to be a little bit timid and not apply enough tension. If you have a lot of padding in that layer below the cling layer then you can apply a lot of tension. Not a lot of padding, apply less tension. Your final layer, it's going to be that 
self-adhesive, cohesive wrap style material, such as we have Vet Wrap here, but Coban is another um, brand that we're familiar with. So whatever brand you use, this layer is going to serve to protect your bandage. It's going to keep your bandage a little cleaner. It's going to help the cling maintain its shape. And it's also going to offer some water resistance properties for your bandage. Not waterproof, let's make that clear, but water resistance, which is just going to help this bandage go a little bit further. So those are the basic layers of the bandage, but wait, what if you want to add a splint? Because you really want to immobilize an area, maybe you have a fracture or a joint you want to immobilize. The splint should always go between your compressive layer and your protective layer. So between your cling and your vet wrap and make sure you secure your splint to the bandage either with tape. Some people will actually use a layer of cling to support it in place. There's always more than one way to do things. Uh, but this is where the splint goes. It goes between the cling and the vet wrap. The purpose of your bandage is going to help dictate how much emphasis you need to put on the various layers. Their order will never change, but the emphasis of each layer might be altered depending on the reason for your bandage. For instance, if you have an orthopedic issue, got a patient with a, a bit of a carpal sprain, you may want to up your cast padding layer add a little bit more so that you have more support in the carpal area for that patient. Now if you've got a dog that has a big wound on its limb and your bandage may want to be focused more on the contact layer and your contact layer will likely vary depending on the stage of wound healing that that wound is in at that particular bandage change. Keep that in mind and make the appropriate adjustments as necessary. Thanks for listening and please, 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 if you have found this information helpful, just hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Have an amazing day.